Sunday morning right here, although it was a bit raining though, but despite that, we give all the glory to God because yes, we are alive and I'm happy that you are alive as well. So today on the show, we're continuing the series which we've been talking about and uh, yeah, you should know already. Oh, let, me, okay, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue the same topic that we've been on, but we have uh, we're going on another dimension today, and the topic is the Seven Mountains Mandate Religion. So last week we talked about politics, but today we're talking about religion. So guys, keep listening and stay connected because you are about to be blessed again this Sunday morning. And as usual, I have with me right here in the studio, Deacon CSU. I am. Good morning, sir. Very much. Lassisi, great again to be and be with you, and particularly to be with Brush Radio, your number one business radio. How was your week, sir? Oh, it's great. In the stop. Well, it's at its time. Everything has its season. We we are not complaining. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, you have heard that we are continuing on the series that we have been going on. This is the seventh. Uh, the seventh years in the mountains. But let, let, let's quickly pray and commit this session to the hand of God. Father, we thank you today. First, that we are alive in the land of the living. Second, that we are healthy enough to come to your presence. You, Third, that in the whole wide world you chose to save and save us and make provision for the whole world. And today we are hearing about religion as a mountain that needs to be conquered by your people and affected for good. Thank you for the unction to minister to my hearers and for understanding that only you, the Holy Spirit, can give. There is no better author, there is no better teacher than you because you are the author of all knowledge that there are. Once more, we thank you for today. Great day, wonderful day it is. In Jesus Christ, now we pray. Amen. Seven mountains mandate. We have come to the seventh of the mountains and the eighth in the episode. We will just cap it up at the next meeting with a topic Give me this mountain. If I were you, I would not miss it for anything because it's the capping of the whole mountain that we've been studying and that we have go been going through. Today, we are talking about the Seven Mountains Mandate religion. And I think you will be wondering, do we need to conquer religion? Was it not the citadel of all the mountains? As we need to conquer education, conquer arts, conquer governance, conquer family. Is religion also taken over by the enemy that we need to take back from? That's part of what will surprise you today, that in spite of religion being the bastion, being the place, being where we are taken off from, religion needed to be conquered. That's what we will be studying. Having said that, I want to remind you that we have studied the family, and everybody belongs to a family. So the family is of interest for everybody. If a wrong foundation is laid in the family, the foundation stays. Therefore, family is a foundation, is a mountain that all need to be interested in. We have studied education. Oh, education is so important from the formal type to informal type, but education molds the individual Therefore, it's of importance to the Christian man. We have studied media. When we studied media, like when we study each and every one, it's as if one is more important than the other. But they are all of equal importance. We have studied politics and governance. We have studied arts and entertainment. We have studied the economy. And today, we are studying religion. If you remember in the introductory about these mountains, I told us that each of these mountains has a principality, each of these mountains has a gatekeeper, and these gatekeepers, their business is to not allow you in who has good intention. Who are the gatekeepers of these mountains? 
before we conquer them Satan the devil positions one or two of his people either demon or principality or power to become gatekeepers they will not let you in just because you appeared at the gate you will hear more about these gatekeepers and it's important we know they are so important that we need to really know how to summon the, uh, the, the issue of gatekeepers there are gatekeepers when we study the economy i want to recap for you we realize that there are people in different sectors of the economy who wouldn't let you in except if you know how to summon their own power uh, a friend of mine many years ago who was a diplomat in one of uh, scandinavian countries saw an opportunity to bring in frozen fish and without knowing that that mountain that segment of the mountain of economy there are gatekeepers there borrowed money from the bank put his own money brought in a lorry load sorry a shipload of set selling and at the moment he set selling the merchant merchants information and there is marine information every day the big guys in the industry monitor what is coming in if you listen to news you hear that one shipload is laden with diesel is coming from this place one other shipload is laden with rice is coming from this place another shipload three shiploads are coming with salt another that's the kind of marine information and the people that are in this line of business are interested because if you are not one of them and try to bring in goods they will stop you they will stop you because they have a control over things that happen there at the grassroots they have a control this my friend without knowing that there are gatekeepers in that sector imported frozen fish as it was still on the highway they began to nose around who is this person how dare him why must him bring it and they waited for him when he landed near the shores of lagos before he could come in they laid the first embargo and then they delayed him they wasted his time knowing that he borrowed money every day time wasted his interest mounting and it could cripple you and they knew that he didn't have the muscle to stand they have the muscle some of them own banks some of them are directors of banks some of them have big credit facility they can hold they have the stay in power you don't have it my friend tried everything to bat on the lagos shore he didn't succeed they simply did not let him get down you know what they did they sent their mysteries to him and they said to him would you be ready to sell off your your shipload he was strong headed he didn't know that they meant it and every effort to make him sell already he is incurring the more he's incurring cost everything he could do they, they, they frustrated him he now said sell to potacot they went along with him to potacot they so frustrated him till he now began to count his loss and the best he could do was to negotiate with them and um, they took it over from him that's one the way they operate some other ones if you are very good and very sharp and you're able to bat and you're able to offload they will they'll flood the market when they flood the market the price each of so those goods become so cheap that you cannot wait they will buy it off you if you decide to sell at a low price and as soon as they take it off you they raise the price again that's the cartel for you we we studied a little on how to summon them if you must summon them you must be introduced by one of them or attached to one of them he comes covering you up that's the way to do it so mountains have gatekeepers uh, i on a very light note I'll, I'll share a joke with you not a joke it's a reality i belong to a fairly large church and i have quite elderly people and uh, when i first clocked 50 and uh, I, I I decided to make an announcement that I have joined the elder statesmen, and the bigger guys and the older guys said, "This young boy, uh, how can you be 50 and uh, join us in the group of elderly men?" I thought they were joking, and jokingly they said to to me, "You didn't take permission from us before you did the Thanksgiving that you are now an elder statesman. For that reason, we have raised the bar." The bar is now 65 till you become 65 will not let you in <laughs> sounded like a joke but that's how those things work oh. that's how those things work so gatekeepers business is to frustrate you from coming in
I will share a professional angle to you on the same issue of gatekeepers to tell you how, how important they are and how frustrating they could be. Many years ago, I desired to be a stockbroker. And I did everything possible. The chartered institute of stockbrokers as an institution had not been established. The way to become a stockbroker was to train. It was more of training than academic. And I desired for over seven years, I did everything that I knew. Later on, I understood how, they, how it worked. How, does it, how was it working then? If you must train, if you must become a stockbroker at that time, what you need to do is to get attached to a stockbroking firm. That stockbroking firm will get you an approval to train. Your approval is usually five council members, including the president of the council. These five council members are well-established men in the society. Let me give you an idea of people who have been president of stock exchange. And these are the council members we are talking about. The first, very first president of Nigerian stock exchange, then Lagos stock exchange, was Salu Yochuku, who used to be the richest man in West Africa, the father of uh, Juku of Biafra. Those are the kind of people that have been president. In my lifetime, while I am a stockbroker, I have seen the Dangotes, the president of stock exchange. I have seen um, Obieris. I have seen uh, dossiers of, Ma of Diamond Bank. How many? These are men. MK Abiola was one time a president of the stock exchange. These are the kind of people they want me to get their signature to endorse that I should come in. Where do I know them? Who knows them that I know? Do I know anybody who knows who knows them? That's the kind of thing. So these are barricades that are put on the way of people who want to come in because that mountain has gatekeepers. Uh, they, they, they just put it that way. But when the time came, particularly when the Lord started dealing with me on issues, the door was open. It's a story for another day. And before you know it, five people that were needed, including the president, and dust without seeing me, they didn't know me. Because somebody who knew me, who could go to them, who could obtain their signature, obtained on my behalf, and I became a stockbroker at that time. But today it's made much easier. But even as, it's, as easy at it, as it is, they are still a gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is the chartered institute of stockbrokers. If they let you in, you go in. Uh, when we were doing the professional exam, I will not forget what they said to us. About passing this exam, that was what they said. If you must pass, it's not because you got 80%. It is because you are one of the numbers that have been chosen. They fix the number of people to be admitted into the, into the uh, profession in a given year. If they said 70 people are going to be admitted, the 71st person may not succeed. So they set the standard according to the number that the council have agreed to come in. That's how difficult it is. Why is it so? Gatekeepers are there to control the gate. We will hear more about these gatekeepers because that's, that's a major issue. Now, before Jesus was, before Jesus came into the world as physical, of course you know that he pre-existed just like I pre-existed before I was put into my mother's womb like Jeremiah God said I knew you so Jesus came over 2000 years ago before he came there were religion all over the place Islam came after Jesus came Muhammad was born in 540 AD and that's after Jesus before that there were ancient religions like Hinduism Hinduism predates even Christianity maybe the time of Judaism that was it the likes of Sikhism were offshoot of Hinduism Jainism was another offshoot of Hinduism Buddhism actually was an offshoot of Hinduism and then African traditional religion was in existence Confucianism which was found by Confucius the rest of China uh, are in that area the Grail message by Abdul Rashid the Rosicrucian order Amok the high faith. These are different religions. Some of them predated Christianity. And there were mountains. There, these mountains were there. So when Jesus appeared on the scene, let me give you a scripture to understand how the mountains work. I'm taking you to Psalm 24, 7 to 10. 
you may need to post it for them. Psalm 24, 7 to 10. Okay. That, 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 that scripture says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Now, I want you to take time to understand this. It's a conversation, actually. It's as if Jesus appeared at the gate and commanded the gates, ancient gates, to be lifted up, and they queried his credentials. Lift up. He said, who is this king of glory? When he said, is the king of glory, lift up the gate for him to enter. And the keepers of the gate said, who is this king of glory? He says, he's the Lord mighty in battle. Jesus conquered this gate. Now, you will marvel that I did not include Christianity in the list of religions that I have put down. I, if you, listen, you want to listen again, I'll say it to you again. Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, African traditional religion, Confucianism, Grail Message, Rosicrucian Order, Amok, Baha'i Faith, and so many others. I didn't include Christianity. It was on purpose. Reason is that Christianity is not a religion. It may baffle you. You may not agree with me, but let me tell you why. Every of this religion was founded by human beings who were seeking for God. There is an innate desire in every creation to worship a higher being. And everybody wants to worship a higher being. Even if you throw an ancient man here now, he will quickly recognize that there is a higher being than him. And then he begins a worship. African traditional religion and all those things came that way. So religion is man's way seeking for God. But Christianity, taken from the book of Genesis, the Bible says when Adam and Eve fell, they were in the garden where God had kept them. The Bible says it was tradition of God to come to them in the coolness of the evening for fellowship. And when he came, having sinned, they needed to cover their nakedness. You know, each time I look at that scripture, I say to myself, in the whole wide world, we are these two couple. The rest of their companion were animals. If I were to be in a whole island with only my wife, who am I covering from? I have no reason to cover. I'm covering my nakedness from strangers. My wife covers for strangers. If we are in the room alone, there is no need to cover. But these people were covering after they discovered that they were naked. And how did they discover? Because sin exposed them. And now the Bible says God came looking for them. It was the same God who killed an animal and skinned the animal and used it to make the first cloth for them. Before then, they were using leaves yes. to cover them. And how long would leaf cover you? It will fall very soon. So God made the first skin and covered them. Now, what am I driving at? Christianity is God looking for the fallen man. When religion is man looking for God. And we can look the other way where God is not. My testimony is as simple as that. I got born again at age 32. The reason was that I was looking the other way. I was born into a religion that is not Christianity. And I followed my father's religion. Till I became of age to reason. And I began to query things around it. But having been exposed to all kinds of religion, including Oriental religions, I pinched my tent, knowing very well that that is the last postal. Now, I couldn't have found God. In all my efforts to find him, I couldn't. But I was heading to a wrong direction. I think I was backing him and thinking I was looking for him. He tapped me from behind and I turned. Did a 360 degree rather 160 one what is the half of 360 one, 160 130 
degrees 400 and yes halfway and first him and that's the story I have as a testimony so the issue of the gatekeepers are real they try to stop Jesus when eventually they realized that Jesus had come they didn't stop remember the story of Herod Herod told the wise men go look for him if you find him please come and tell me that I may also join to worship him what was his intention the Bible says he wanted to kill him and the Bible says the, the, the wise men were stopped from going back to Herod and they were told not to return to Herod and then they went another way Herod was not satisfied he knew that somebody who is coming to take the key of the gates of religion and convert it to Christianity was on the way he, he, they, they, he pursued him the Bible says in order to make sure he exterminated the man or killed the, the young Jesus he killed innocent children of a certain age within his age bracket and still missed him because the same God who sent him had asked Mary and Joseph to take him to Egypt that's where they were till they were told that the man who sought after the life of the lad, little lad had died they returned to Bethlehem that's the Bible for you so these mountain gatekeepers are real and their business is to frustrate your appearance on the mountain they are there in every of the of the mountain they are there in religion they are there in education they are there just name it if you must appear you must also take a cognizance of how to overcome them because they are they will try to stop you i shared my testimony with you so the reason why i did not include christianity into this group is because christianity is not a religion it is man god rather looking for the fallen man and finding the fallen man praise the lord Hallelujah. the principality on this mountain of religion is satan the devil himself the mountain is so important that he decided to be the principality on the mountain now let me show you where Isaiah 14 12 to 14 you may put it on the screen 13 14 12 to 14 and I read how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations for thou hast said in thy heart I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north I will ascend above the heights of the clouds I will be like the most high this is the thought in the mind of Satan the devil that made heaven that made God send him down because he was in heaven with God but he decided to rebel against God to take the place of God he said I will exalt I would move I will take over and when pride was found in him the Bible says he was thrown down that is from the time he began to compete with God on this very important mountain religion is the another name for the mountain of religion is worship it's a mind mender it is a relationship that could change everything about you and he knows that's why he's attacking that 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 very um that very mountain the mountain is of importance to him satan the devil is a principality he's a power he's a person there they can come in different forms they can come in different forms some of them are so subtle they even come claiming to be christianity uh, and i i see a lot of them they come claiming that they are christians why because they use the bible but they use the bible the wrong way such people are more subtle they are much more dangerous than the ones that say jesus is not lord i don't give a damn about those ones that jesus that say that jesus is not lord i don't care because they will only deceive people who are very gullible the ones i fear are the ones that use the bible as i use claim to be christians behave like christians having all his nature but denying his power that's how the bible described them those ones are more dangerous 
but the mountain of religion and the part I'm dealing on the Christianity part now what is then this Christianity that I've been talking about it is a way of life it's not religion it's a, a wholesome and packaged way of life it's not religion it is a way to live your life which Jesus himself introduced to us and whoever that ever put the principles to use had always succeeded let me share one with you there was a man many years ago called Mahatma Gandhi in Sanskrit the root language that Hindu Hindu Hindi rather is made of Mahatma means great soul so Mahatma Gandhi was a great soul and he led the people of India to freedom India was a British col uh, colony in those days but how did he do that without shooting one gun India wasn't willing sorry Britain wasn't willing to leave India but when Gandhi appeared on the scene Gandhi was first in South Africa here and then he now relocated to India and then led the freedom movement they asked him after he won the independence I said how did you win this independence without shooting a gun he said I, I learned the principle from the Bible it was the way of Jesus that made me do it and the person was curious he said what do you mean he said Jesus said if somebody wants your coat clock give him also your coat he says if somebody should slap you on the left give him also your right cheek that simply means non non violence non violence he now coined the Sanskrit took it from a Sanskrit word that is called Satyagraha Satyagraha means non violent way of solving violent issues that's simply the principle that made him lead India out of Indi out of bondage of the British and he succeeded why did he succeed with a non-christian because it's a principle and it's a way of life anybody who applies the principles that Christianity enunciated will have the same success you may not make heaven I want to let you know that but as for success the Bible says it has given us all that pertain to life and godliness whoever that understands those principles will benefit from those principles that's simply what he's saying so Christianity is a way of life the principles enunciated by Christianity could be used by anybody and successfully too my challenge to you is if you're a Christian then it ought to work better for you because you have something that they don't have but as for whether it works it does work irrespective of your belief system for the principles about things that pertain to life and godliness having said that what strategy do we use to enforce the takeover of this mountain number one on your knees it's a spiritual issue it demands spiritual answers it was Bucci your favorite songwriter who says those that kneel before God shall stand before men if you have seen one who kneels before God he will stand before men so we need to kneel before this God as to receive power to move that's number one number two decree it into existence since you have received direction to go and after that you take a step of faith and move now I have a problem I belong to a church where people come to say I have a call of God and the board sits over such a person and try to get out the call he had how did you know you have a call popular story is this call has been on for some time but I have not answered it and how did you know I saw myself preaching to a large crowd in the dream and okay and because you said you had a call nobody was there when you had the call the board is constrained to approve you're going to Bible school but my concern is the feeling that whenever you have a call it must end up as a pulpit preacher and I say no it's not true 
There are calls and there are calls. There are calls to end up as a pulpit preacher. There are some other calls to do other things for God in the marketplace. I'm a lay preacher. I'm not a pastor. I don't have a pulpit anywhere. My pulpit is my table in the office. My pulpit is the marketplace. So there are priests in the marketplace. So you are also called. When you have a call, answer the call. There are some that could be called to go and establish an orphanage. I know of a sister who was in the army, a colonel, retired. But she was a nurse in the medical corps of the army. When she retired, she said she had a call to open an orphanage. And goes about taking children that are abandoned. He, she established a rapport with the police. There's an abandoned child in the dustbin in Ketu. The police recovers the baby and says, Mama, we have a child for you. He goes to take them. And she goes to take them, rather. To tell you that she is called of God. There is no child she will reject. Some of them are bad. Some of them are imbecile. Some of them have bad control disorder. Some of them are in morons. But so long as a child and is breathing, Mama will take. That tells you that is a call. The people that are trading in that area, using it to make money, won't take children that are sick. But Mama will take all. That's a ministry. That's a call. What call do you have? It must not be on the pulpit. We are not all called to preach as pastors over churches. I am called to be a priest in the marketplace. What about you? So if you have a call, we need to conquer the, the, the mountain of religion. A mountain of religion is found in every marketplace, in every other mountain. That is the beauty of this mountain. This mountain is in education. This mountain is inside every other mountain. That's how wonderful it is. Now, everyone born of God that is born again must identify the mountain that he is called to occupy and to work for God. Next, we will be talking about give me this mountain. That should be the capping of the whole story. But before then, if you have a call, the first thing you must do is to give your life to Jesus. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I would like to pray with you. You are not, I'm not seeing you. But whom you are giving your life to is seeing you. All I want you to do is to put your right hand on your chest and I will pray with you. After that, I'll pray the next prayer also. Now, wherever you are and you're hearing me and you desire to give your life to Jesus, put your right hand on your chest. I give you the first minute to do your confession because it is by mouth and confession that we become born again. Open your mouth. Tell him that, that you have done wrong. If I were you, I would tell him that I have lived my life my own way all this period. Now I want him to help me to live this life his, his own way, to order my steps, to do the right things. That's the kind of confession that pleases God. If you know of anything you have done that you consider a sin, confess it unto him who is able to forgive you. Wherever you are, you don't necessarily need a pastor to confess to. No, not in this matter. In this matter, you're doing your confession unto him who has made provision to forgive you. He says, it does not matter how dirty your sin is, it shall be as white as snow. One minute and I'll pray with you. Thank you, Lord, for every hand that is placed on every chest this afternoon, or this morning, rather. Thank you because you will remember them for good. You will direct them henceforth. You will remove their names from the book of death and put it in the book of life. Thank you for preserving and keeping these lives. Thank you, Lord. You said, of all the people given to you, you have lost none except the son of perdition. Because none of them is a son of perdition. None of them will be lost. Thank you for what you have done. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. If you pray this prayer, please make a contact. Reach back to us. We would like to continue to pray with you and monitor your spiritual growth wherever you are. The next prayer has to do with the mountain of religion. Those of you that have a call in one area or the other. Like I told you, I have since pinched my tent in the lay ministry. And that's where my own mountain is. It's mountain of religion, but a different and special type of it. I'm not wearing collar. That's why I'm wearing ordinary tie, my business suit. I'm not going to answer pastor. I'm not a pastor. 
but I do things pastors do I pray I link you I do things that every other pastor would do but I'm not a pastor a regular pastor as you know that's a call I don't know where he called you whichever place now take up that mountain hold on to it next time we will be praying on give me this mountain thank you very much and God bless you for listening thank you all right wow that's a that's a very very powerful one right there and uh i'm so happy that i'm part of that and i'm sure that i'm 100 percent blessed today and i want to believe that you are too so like you said if you pray that prayer please reach out to us via this phone number 0809791 0074 you can also send us a whatsapp message on that same number i will say it again zero eight zero nine seven nine one zero zero seven four and do follow us on all social media platforms so that you will not miss any of our shows or this particular show so on facebook if you're not watching us already you can go there right now like a page we have broad street radio ng on youtube if you miss the show you can always go back there to see the show again and again so you can just search for Broad Street Radio NG as well. On Twitter, we are Broad Street ROAD. Instagram, Broad Street ROAD. And uh, yes, you can also follow, go to our website. Yes, go to our website. Visit us at www.brostreetradio.com. And if you have a message, like a personal message you want to send to us directly or you want to sponsor your, sh or, or your brand or product or services, or you probably want to sponsor any of our shows at all or promote your product or services at all, you can always send us a mail, send it to hello at brustreetradio.com and of course you can come to our office right here which is Medifair House 5860 Broad Street, Lagos Island. This is Broad Street Radio, your number one business radio station. My name is Ojo Lassisi aka Renova. Gospel Hour continues and uh, up next is World Feast. Stay connected, don't go anywhere. <laughs>